But in this start position, we want to make sure he's nice and straight, nice and upright, load cells are straight, everything's good. Same with these things, making sure everything's just like straight, happy day. So when the force is produced, it's in a, it's in a similar line or a perpendicular area as well. So if you can see the screen, um, Benji's going to do about seven Nordics for me. <laughs> so I'll do a couple um, and, and we'll hopefully see a deficit. If not, we'll, I'll make you do 10 more. Whenever you're ready, mate, go for it. So sweet and relax. Hold on, just Sash has busted it. So one thing you realize with the Nordic, the actual the coaching cues for Benji, who's quite an experienced Nordica. Yeah, times are tough, mate. Uh, so Benji's done a lot of Nordics before. So he knows kind of his technique and what he's doing. So he, he knows that when we actually test this stuff, the early part of range is almost a waste of time. Because by the time you get out to here is where the bigger values come and where we actually get some good stuff. So if you saw Benji's effort, he kind of dove into it a little bit and then started slamming the brakes a bit here. If he wasted all his energy up the top here, he could be cooked by the time he gets here. We actually don't get a good measure of how strong he is. So with these efforts, our idea is to try and get out as long as you possibly can and spend your most time at the end of range instead of wasting your efforts here. If you waste your effort here and you go, oh, it hurts, it hurts, and then you just drop, you actually don't get an idea of how strong they are because our bigger numbers come out these longer lengths. Sweet, all right, mate, have a bit of a go. When you're ready. Nice, good. Which one's your bad little left leg? Left leg. So if you press pause on that for a stash. Pause, yeah. So here's see Benji's, uh, his peaks are basically similar. Yeah, there's what, five Newtons, so within the error of the actual test. So the biggest thing you can see, and it's pretty clear on this, his left leg doesn't hit that peak until right at the end of the movement. So the right leg is doing a lot of the work for him in the early part of the range, and that left leg kind of plays catch up towards the end. Now, whilst there's no evidence to suggest that doing this will increase your risk of injury or during rehab, you should focus on that. Looking at that, you can actually go, well, probably the left leg is getting hidden a little bit by the right leg. So maybe some single leg eccentric work might be useful. Or just some single leg training might be useful for that, that left leg as well. Uh, we'll do one more, we'll do one more. Make sure this is what I mean. Yeah, when you're ready, mate. Yeah, sweet. It's the same thing again. His peak is similar. The peaks are happening at different parts of the movement. The right leg's getting it early and then holding, whereas the left leg is getting the peak and he's dropping. So he's typically falling in this movement probably because his left leg can't hold on. So maybe we're not finding out how strong his right leg is eccentrically as a result. Um, so that's something to consider. So maybe with the measure, whether it's your force plates, where you can possibly do something single leg eccentrically and maybe load them up around the hip to try and get some different measures where you might get a better idea of how strong that right leg is because he's probably hiding some asymmetry here because he hasn't got that set up.